We know the equations so well from our last lecture from one dimensional motion with a constant acceleration. The first line tells you what the x position is as a function of time. The index t tells you that it's changing with time. It is the position at t equals zero plus the velocity at t equals zero times t plus one half a x t squared if there is an acceleration in the x direction. The velocity immediately comes from taking the derivative of this function and the acceleration comes from taking the derivative of this function. Now, if we have a, a motion which is more complicated, which reaches out to two or three dimensions, we can decompose the motion in three perpendicular axes, and you can replace every x here by a y, which gives you the entire behavior in the y direction, and if you want to know the behavior in the z direction, you replace every x here by z, and then you have decomposed the motion in three directions. Each of them are linear. And that's what I want to do now. I'm going to throw up an object, a golf ball or an apple, in 26100. And we know that it's in a vertical plane, so we have we only deal with a two-dimensional problem, this being, I call this my x-axis, and I'm going to call this my y-axis. I call this increasing value of x, and I call this increasing value of y. I could have called this increasing value of y. Today I have decided to call this increasing value of y. I'm free in that choice. I throw up an object at a certain angle, and I see a motion like this, boing, and it comes back to the ground. My initial speed when I threw it was V0, and the angle here is alpha. The x component of that initial velocity is V0 cosine alpha, and the y component equals v0 sine alpha. So that's the begins velocity of in the x direction, and this is the begin velocity in the y direction. A little later in time, that object is here at point P, and this is now the position vector, which we have called r of t, that's this vector. That's the vector that is moving through space. At this moment in time, x of t is here. And at this moment in time, y of t is here. And now, you're going to see, for the first time, a big gain by the way that we have divided the two axes, which live an independent life. First x. I want to know everything about x that has to be known. I want to know where it is at any moment in time, velocity and the acceleration, only in x. First, I want to know that at t equals zero. Well, at t equals zero, I look there, x zero, that's the, I can choose that to be zero. So I can say x zero is zero, that's my free choice. Now I need v zero x, what is the velocity? The velocity at t equals zero, which we have called v zero x, is this velocity, v zero cosine alpha. And is not going to change. Why is it not going to change? because there is no a of x. So this term here is zero, we only have this one. So at all moments in time, the velocity in the x direction is v zero cosine alpha. And the a of x equals zero. Now I want to do the same in the x direction for time t. Well, at time t, 
I look there at the first equation. Uh, uh, there it is. X0 is 0. I know V0x, that is V0 cosine alpha. So X of t is V0 cosine alpha times t. But there is no acceleration, so that's it. What is Vx of t? The velocity in the x direction at any moment in time. That is that, that, that is that equation. That is simply V0x. It is not changing in time because there is no acceleration. So the initial velocity at t0 is the same as t seconds later. And the acceleration is zero. Now, we're going to do this for the y direction. And now you begin to see the gain for the decomposition. In the y direction, we change the x by y. And so we do it first at t equals zero. So look there. This becomes y zero, I call that zero. I can always call my origin zero. I get v zero y times t. Well, v zero y is this quantity, is v zero sine alpha, v zero sine alpha. This is v zero sine alpha. That is the velocity at time zero, and this is zero. At time zero. This is zero at time zero. What is the acceleration in the y direction at time zero? What is the acceleration? That has to do with gravity. There is no acceleration in the x direction, but you better believe it, there is one in the y direction. So only when we deal with the y equations does this acceleration come in, not at all when we deal with the x direction. Well, if we call the acceleration due to gravity g equals plus 9.80, and I always call it g, what would be the acceleration in the y direction, given the fact that I call this increasing value of y? Minus 9.8, which I will also say 